Hello and welcome back to KTech Designs. My name is Seth. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over the path workbench in FreeCAD. This is a very uh, powerful workbench, in my opinion, for creating G code to uh, CNC parts. Um, I'm going to use a, uh, a plate in this instance. Uh, that's going to be fairly simple, but it'll get you uh, started with creating your own custom tools and understanding how to use uh, profile and uh, whole processes or operations. So in this uh, tutorial, I will go through creating the part and then creating your own custom tool and then applying operations to the part. Uh, visualizing the cut operations to ensure that you've set them up correctly and then finally exporting the G code. Uh, I apologize if I sound a little stuffy. It is allergy season in my neck of the woods so <laughs> I'm gonna sound a little different but um, hopefully I can still get through this. And with that let's get started. So from the start page let's create a new part Let's go up to our part design workbench, create a body, create a sketch, sketch this on the XY plane, click OK. Uh, I'm going to start the part from the origin here. Generally, I like to make parts symmetric about both axes, uh, but for uh, CNC placement purposes, I'm going to start my part here. So you need a rectangle. Draw that out there. Uh, the part is 177.8 millimeters long. And 127 millimeters tall. Click close. We'll pad that and that's only 2 millimeters thick. Next, we're going to place the holes. Uh, and this is actually an important step when it comes to processing holes in the uh, path workbench. Um, if you simply create a, uh, a pocket, a circular pocket, that can make um, picking that drill process or operation uh, difficult. So it's actually better to use the, the hole uh, cut that whole feature because uh, the path workbench can actually collect all of those at once and all you have to do is select the, the tool size and it'll uh, treat those appropriately. So let's make a new sketch. Uh, we're going to do this one on the XY plane and I'm just going to drop a couple circles in. Close that sketch because we need to move that uh, placement. So let's go to the sketch, go down to attachment, go down to position, and we want to change our Z height to two millimeters because that's how thick the plate is. And now you can see the sketch is visible. So let's go back into editing that sketch and I'll place the rest of the holes and dimension them. Why are we still here? Just to suffer every night. All of these holes are equal, so I'll select all of them and set them equal. Let's dimension the diameter, which is uh, 3.5 millimeters. Uh, now let's locate this part, locate these holes here. Uh, the vertical dimension is 3 millimeters from the corner, and it's the same horizontally. Now let's set our hole distances. These two are 120 millimeters apart. Uh, 
Uh, these are 170.8 millimeters apart. Um, these all could also be dimensioned off of a corner. You can use this um, link geometry feature and pick a corner. Uh, but if you've used FreeCAD for a while, you know that that is a little bit dangerous if you want to make changes to the plate. So uh, it's best to dimension things this way. Um, these two are dimensioned relative to each other, and that's 56.5. Click Close. And then we're going to pick the Hole tool. Um, let's just do an isometric regular profile uh, because these are actually clearance holes for an M3, so that works. I think technically I do not have to set the hole diameter uh, when doing the sketch if I'm going to use this hole tool because it'll change the size for me. Uh, but it's nice to have that reference if for some reason I delete this and forget what I picked. Uh, at least the sketches will be accurate. Uh, the dimension, I'll just say through all. The clearance is a standard clearance, so the di diameter is 3.4. That's fine. And then we click OK. All right, now we finished our part. It's a pretty simple part. It's time to go over to our path workbench. And we're going to create a job. Uh, I do not have a template uh, set up, but you want to make sure that the job is going to be on the, the body that you've selected. So if for some reason you had more than one body in here, you would want to select the correct body. Obviously, I just have one, so I go with the default. It's going to come up with this uh, job edit page. Um, first thing we're going to want to do is, actually, we can leave that alone. We want to create our stock shape. So this would be the size of material you're going to cut from. Now, I'm actually using a, a larger bit of stock, but it's not important for uh, generating the G-code uh, in this case. Oh, I want to see that view. So I actually want my Z-height to be zero because my stock is actually two millimeters thick and then I'll just you can use the scroll wheel I'm just gonna roll these up to about five millimeters and that'll help with uh, the toolpath uh, visualization which I'll show you uh, in a little bit okay that's set if we scroll down here there isn't much to change I believe a lot of this can be adjusted when you pick one of the other uh, stock types. Now if we go to tools, um, you'll see that there's just a generic default tool there. Um, I actually want to add my own custom tool, which is this one here, and uh, remove this one. Uh, and I'll show you how to create your own custom tool in a minute. All right, that's good. So for the output, this is where you'll change your output location and file name. I haven't had any template created or anything, so it's just blank. And I actually don't need to export it quite yet, so I'm going to leave that alone. But uh, what is important is I want to use the Gerbil processor because my CNC uh, processes in uh, the Gerbil format um, I think it actually could process in others, but I know for a fact that it does accept Gerbil, so that's what I have it changed to. Uh, keep the rest default, that is okay, and we're good. Uh, before we get into the operations, let me quickly show you how to create a tool. So we need to go up to Path, we need to go up to Tool Bit Library Editor. Um, and you can see that this is my custom tool. It's an eighth inch bit uh, upcut style with a single flute. Um, 
but you should have one through nine as the default. All right, so to create, create your own tool, we're gonna go up to create tool bit. Um, I'm making an end mill, so I'm gonna pick the end mill type to open. Uh, you can see that I've already created a um, tool here. So what you'd wanna do is name your tool appropriately. Uh, mine is an upcut single flute, uh, eighth inch diameter. I should call it end mill. Can't spell. Okay, and then click save. Oh, you can see this shape type is end mill, so that's probably why I didn't include end mill in my uh, description the first time, but no matter. Um, now, we saved a copy of the five millimeter end mill to make this, so we actually need to go and edit this. So you can just double click it here. Diameter, I've changed it to three millimeters, which is close enough to an eighth inch bit uh, for our purposes. And then you'll want to look at the bit shape. Um, I bought my bits online on Amazon, so they had all of the uh, information there. I didn't have to take measurements, uh, but you want to set your cutting edge height uh, which is just your actual bit cutting length, or the length of the fluted area. Um, then the length is the overall length of the bit, and your shank diameter would be your uh, non-cutting part of the bit, which should be the same diameter, but uh, sometimes they're they're different if, um, I don't know, you're cutting a larger hole, but you don't need to have your shank the same size as like a 20 millimeter bit you know this maybe need to only be 12 or something um, but once you get all of those set I'm not going to set everything here just click OK click close now let's go back into our job and edit that go to tools you don't have to click that click add uh, I'm going to add this one because this has the uh, correct settings on it. Click open. This is the default tool, we don't want that, remove it. Now set this tool number to one, indicating that it's the first, and I guess only tool. Uh, we need to set our speeds. So I'm just gonna hit edit on here. Um, and that's 30, and that's 30. And then my spindle speed is 1200. And I want it to go forward, which I believe is clockwise. Okay. Click OK. Now that our tool is set up, we can begin operations. Let's select the top face and then go up to profile. So that this will process all of the outer edges. You could process holes as well. In circles, uh, but I don't want to do that as a profile. I want to do that as a drill operation, so leave those unselected. Uh, we want the cut side to be outside, meaning the drill bit is going to be out here. If we do inside, then the drill bit is going to be here. You want to make sure use compensation is selected uh, to make sure that the cut offset is correct. I'm going to go counterclockwise, so it's going to drill this direction. I don't need an extra offset. I don't need a rotation. Uh, you can tell that I've selected the correct tool and that my base geometry is selected. Click apply. Click OK. The next operation we want to add is our drill operation. So we can select the top face again. Select drilling path. If we go to our base geometry, you can see that it grabbed all of our holes, our hole features. Uh, select the right tool. There is no coolant. Um, I'm going to add a peck operation, uh, meaning that the bit should drive up and down, up and down. It's formulaic right now, so maybe I could make it 0.5. Okay, there we go. And uh, the retraction height is, you know, how far the bit backs up uh, during each peck. So that's good.
click apply, click OK. You can see our tool path is generating properly. Um, so let us simulate this, make sure that it's working correctly. Slow it down a bit. Uh, you can see it modeled our uh, bit. Um, and this shape would change based on the information that you added when you created your bit. So this is 12 meter, millimeters. This is how long the the bit area is. And then the total is, I think, 50, something like that. And then, of course, the diameter for both of these is 3 millimeters. So if we did this right, when we run the simulation, we should see uh, material actually m removed. So let's click OK. So that doesn't look quite right. The drilling operation was good, but for some reason the profile didn't come out as expected. Let me just run that again. Okay, so it appears that the profile didn't actually go to the correct depth. The final depth is saying 2, when it should be 0. Okay. Let's run that again. Uh, let's remove this cut material shape. This always generates, where's the delete? Uh, that always generates uh, after you uh, run a simulation. Again, let's slow that down. Okay, that worked. Excellent, okay. So that is showing that we cre created a proper uh, G-code toolpath. Now you might notice that there's a complete separation of the stock part from the uh, the model, the part we're trying to cut out. And depending on what options you have for clamping the part, this is actually not a good design because now it's going to be free floating. Especially if you wanted to drill the holes last, there would be nothing to hold this part in place unless you had some kind of clamping in the middle. And even then, it would get a lot of... Uh, for lack of a better word, flapping when you're drilling in these areas. So we actually need to do what's called a dress up. Click OK on that. I don't want that anymore. Um, so we want to click on our profile. We're going to go, uh, I guess, right click. That's where they are. And we want to do a dress up. Um, and now what these are is simply put a modification to a tool path. Um, what I want to add is uh, the tag dress up. So now that what this is going to do is add a thin connected feature to the path or to the profile. So when I'm cutting the profile, it's going to create a little bump. Um, and I can set that distance here. The number of tags I think I want are eight. Uh, let's take that back. I'll leave it with six. Um, and then the width we want for these probably doesn't have to be very wide. Uh, let's just say six millimeters. And the height probably, it's a two millimeter plate, so let's just say one millimeter. I can probably cut through that with a blade pretty easily. Um, and then I'll leave that default. Click apply. OK. Um, now we can go back to our simulation and see what that looks like. Excellent. So now you see it left these tags here. A one millimeter tag. Oops. Oh, 
which will hold the part in place. So that way, this stock material, um, it, my the plate I'm using is actually larger. I could clamp, clamp it here and here, and that'll give me enough uh, holding power to keep this in place. Now I'm actually using uh, some wood tape to restrain to to hold the part in the middle as well. So this should be uh, held in place very well. Click OK. Just hide that for now. And that's it. That's a, a quick introduction into how to use the path workbench. Um, actually, the final thing we should do is save the job. So let's click on the job here. Let's click on post process. And I'll just go to the desktop. Um, uh, we'll just name it uh, divider plate job one and then we're going to do dot nc and here's the code click ok and that's that's it um, I'm going to do a little more uh, testing myself of doing some of these other codes especially engraving uh, I have a lot of V bits and I know that those are good for making uh, like an LED plaque, a light-up plaque or something. And uh, I may make a video on that. Um, but thanks for watching. I hope that was informative. I hope that uh, gave you a good introduction into how to set up a job and add uh, the operations that you need. Um, as always, please like this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment to let me know what you thought. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.